In this video, we're making a big batch of smooth, delicious vanilla, uh, whoa, <laughs> American buttercream. <laughs> Hi, it's Carolyn. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get notified whenever I release a new video. I've had people ask me before, you see in the background when I'm making cakes and I have this huge bowl of icing and people ask, how do I make this big bowl of icing? And it ends up being so smooth and so delicious and we're using my classic American buttercream recipe. So let's get into the video. To make one batch of this icing, you will need two and a half sticks of butter. I, I prefer to use salted butter. The salt cuts down on the sweetness. This is 10 ounces total or 20 tablespoons. One half cup of shortening. This is high ratio sweet tech shortening. The sweet tech shortening comes in big 50 pound blocks. I prefer this shortening over anything else. It just has a better mouth feel. Um, I can find it and link it below. It is an investment to make to purchase it, but it does taste the best. If you can't get Sweet Tech Shortening, you can go to Walmart and try this shortening. It is not all vegetable shortening. It is an animal fat shortening. You must make sure that you do not get the shortening that says all vegetable shortening on it because it will have a different, uh, a greasy taste. I have a video comparing Sweet Techs with other shortenings like this, and I will link that below. A two pound bag of confectioner's 10x powdered sugar. This is 907 grams or 32 ounces. My most favorite flavoring, Wilton Clear Vanilla. It's so amazing, so delicious, everybody loves it. I will find it and link it below. So you'll probably need between one and three teaspoons of this per batch. And some liquid, I, I prefer to use water. This is room temperature water. This is a coffee scoop, but it's about a tablespoon that I just like to use to measure my liquid. You can also use milk if you'd like. Um, I just prefer to use water. So that was all the ingredients that you'll need for one batch, and I actually have enough to make three batches. I just multiplied everything by three to get how much that I will need. So I have two mixers. I, it, it has changed my life since I got two mixers. It makes my life so much easier. If you only have one mixer, you'll just have to empty the bowl and remake it uh, twice. But we'll start by adding the butter to the bowl and I'm gonna do both bowls. So adding two and a half sticks of butter. And this butter is soft enough where I can um, push my finger into it and it makes it indent, but it's not too soft where it's gonna melt. And I'm gonna put both mixers on uh, a medium speed for about 30 seconds to uh, whip the butter. And once that's next, I'm gonna add a half cup of the shortening to each of the bowls. And I wanna mix this again on a uh, medium high speed for about a minute to whip everything together. And then I'm gonna add the one to three teaspoons of vanilla. I just eyeball it. You can measure it out if you like. And mix that again for about 20 seconds. So I'm gonna, I found that if I add liquid to the bowl before I add the sugar, the sugar, the, the icing doesn't stick to the bottom of the bowl. So it is pretty dry out right now. It's the beginning of March in, near Philly. So it's dry, I need to add more liquid to the icing. If it were the middle of summer, I would have to add less. So right now I'm gonna start by adding two tablespoons of liquid to the bottom of each bowl. And then I'm gonna add the entire bag of sugar. And I find that the sugar gets stuck on one side, I just kind of turn it on real quick just to mix it just a little bit so I can get the bag out. And now I want to cover these with a towel. Um, I could dampen the towel, but I don't feel like having wet towels in my kitchen. <laughs> but dampening the towel will help catch more of the sugar as well. So I'm gonna lock these both down, cover it with a towel. Once I hear this start bumping up and down, I know that it's start, starting to come together and I will add more liquid. So turning these both on very low and covering with a towel. Uh, this is starting to bump up and down. Now I know I have to add more liquid. So I'm gonna do another two tablespoons of liquid in each bowl. 
It's better to add a little liquid at a time and then go back and add more if it's too stiff. So let's see how this is. It does look, still looks a little thick. Yeah, so it's kind of difficult to get my spatula through. But what I want to do right now, just scrape off the sides and the bottom. All right, putting these both back down and I'm gonna add another tablespoon of liquid to each and see the consistency that I get. All right, this looks better. So what I wanna do now is turn it on a medium high for about 20 seconds to really whip it together. Now, I have two batches of icing. I wanna get everything into the same bowl. If you only have one mixer, now you're going to want to take this bowl out, get a separate bowl and empty all the icing into the bowl and start all over. So scraping down the sides and the bottom again. And now I want to empty the contents of this bowl into the other one. And actually I feel like this icing is still a little stiff. So I'm going to add um, just like a half a tablespoon each. So I'm filling this one and doing half in here and half in there um, just to get it a little thinner. And the way I knew that is, see, this is easier. My, my spatula is going through it easier. It's going to be easier to spread. Um, your icing can't be too thick. If you're covering a cake with icing and it's too thick, it's going to start pulling the cake, pulling away from the cake, and it's just, it just turns into a mess. So, okay, now I'm going to empty the entire contents of this bowl into this one. And these are five quart bowls, by the way. If you have a smaller four and a half quart bowl, um, you'll need less. And if you have a bigger bowl, you might need more. What we're trying to do is fill this bowl with icing. And now I'm going to do the same exact thing again. So this is what you would do if you just had one mixer. You would empty into a bowl and then start all over again in the same bowl. So I'm doing the same recipe as I showed you before. All right, and that's a good spreadable consistency. So what I mean by that is it's holding peaks. If I lift up, it's holding itself. It's not falling over, but I can still get my spatula through it. So I don't know if you could see, there are a bunch of air bubbles in here from just beating it. So now we're gonna whip all the, whoops. <laughs> we're gonna whip all the air out. So adding the entire batch to this bowl. So this is three batches in one five quart bowl. Putting this bowl on here, and what's gonna happen, you must completely submerge the paddle completely in the icing, and what it's gonna do, it's gonna kind of form a vacuum, and it's gonna start whipping, and as it's whipping, it's gonna start whipping all the air bubbles out of the icing. So I'm gonna put this down, and I'm gonna turn it on low to start, and you're gonna see the icing fill the bowl. It's gonna touch the sides. You don't wanna see any icing gaps. So what I like to do is just take my spatula and wipe down, and I'm basically sealing the icing all around the bowl. A lot of air bubbles in here right now. So what I wanna do, it's completely sealed. The paddle is completely submerged. I'm gonna turn this on a medium high heat, or a medium high heat, a medium high speed. <laughs> this goes up to 10, so I'm gonna put it on about a six or a seven. All right, it's on an eight out of 10. Let it sit there for about a minute. Sometimes I like to lift this up just a little bit to make sure that it's whipping the upper parts of the icing. Still keeping the paddle submerged so I'm not lifting it out of the icing. And you can see there's no gaps in the icing around the side. So taking my spatula again, and I'm just wiping that top part off to try to mix it in. All 
as I lift it, it's starting to, to stir the icing on the top part. But I don't want to completely lift the, the paddle out of the icing, keep it submerged. And I think I just said that. And am I screaming? Because I know I have a microphone. Uh, hopefully I'm not talking too loud. And you can see the air bubbles are starting to come out of the icing. So it's been on for about a minute now. I want to do probably another minute really whipping it together. All right, I'm gonna lift this up. See, it's, it's hard to lift up because it's formed like a vacuum. And look at this icing. It hardly has any air bubbles in it. It is so smooth. It's so easy to move your spatula through it. Um, and this is how I make a big batch of icing. So this is vanilla icing. And I use a lot of this to fill cakes, to, to ice cakes and everything. So that is how I make a big batch of icing. So here you go. Here is my, as my boyfriend would say, gigantic. <laughs> Cause he, I always make fun of him. He has a British accent and he says it's gigantic. <laughs> my gigantic bowl of buttercream icing. Why is it so heavy? I could totally do some bicep curls with this, but ready for me to use and I'm going to fill my cakes and ice my cakes with it. Now, I know what someone's gonna say. You're gonna say, you whipped all the air out of this icing and you got it so smooth. What if I want to make a smaller batch and get smooth icing? Well, there's an entirely different process um, that I do when I'm working with smaller batches, when I'm coloring my icing, and I'm actually going to post that video next um, just so this video isn't so long. However, it is more about, for me, it's more about the smoothing method than getting all the air bubbles out when I have a smaller batch. But when I have a bigger batch like this, you can fill the bowl, whip all the air out, and it really becomes so smooth and it's so easy to work with. A couple things. When I store the icing, I'm gonna put it in a container like this. And I just got this. I can't remember if I got it on Amazon or at Kohl's, but I will find it and link it below. And I will store it in this and pop it in the fridge. I keep it stored in the refrigerator. You don't want it sitting out more than like a day or so. I mean, nothing in here is really going to spoil, but I just like to keep my icing refrigerated and it can last for a couple weeks in the fridge. And if you need to, I always, I always give the option to freeze. I never freeze the icing because I use so much of it, but you could freeze it, wrap it up in, a, in an airtight container and I'd probably wrap it up in plastic wrap as well to uh, freeze it. And then when you thaw it, you want to take it out of the freezer and put it in the refrigerator to thaw and then take it out of the fridge and bring it to room temperature. So if you wanted to make a big batch of icing that wasn't white, white, <laughs> you would want to color the, the icing before you add the sugar. It's a lot easier to add the coloring to the butter and shortening mixture before the sugar gets added. Um, but I, I'm gonna make another video on how I get a smoother icing when it's a smaller batch, but here you go. <laughs> so this week I have like eight or nine cakes and I'm, I'm gonna go a little insane, but that's okay. I will use all of this icing <laughs> and that's why I needed to make such a big batch. So if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below and you can follow me on my socials and on my website. Everything is listed in the description below as well. And if you wanna stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit the subscribe button and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching and remember it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.